Alan Stewart, producer on the bus's TV series 1, 2, 3 and 4. Stuart Allen was the first producer of the On the Buses television series. He was to produce the first four series of the classic sitcom, which was a total of 39 episodes. It is fair to say that Allen produced a large majority of the best loved On the Buses episodes between 1969 and 1971. Allen is renowned for producing a whole host of top quality British sitcoms spread over three decades. These included All Gas and Gators, Love Thy Neighbour, Yes My Dear, The Wag Trade, Mind Your Language, and Yes Minister, to name but a few. Without a doubt, he will always be remembered for his behind the camera contribution to On the Buses and the great job he did in casting the parts for the hit sitcom. Here are some of Stuart Allen's memories of On the Buses whilst talking at the 40th anniversary. On the Buses event staged at LST Studios in Bournemouth in June 2009. Alan said, London Weekend Television had just started as a television company and the head of programmes at London, London Weekend Television thought that he wanted to have a better style of comedy. Fortunately, the audience, our television viewers, weren't that keen on very sophisticated middle-class comedy and I said to Frank Muir, I think we ought to do something which appeals to the majority of people and not just a few. And so he said, well, I've got this script here. It's been rejected by the BBC. What do you think of this? We read it and we thought this is the sort of show we need to do at London Weekend Television and we set about casting it. Reg Varney was available and had been in the rag trade and very successful he was too. And he was very keen and both the Ronalds, Wolf and Chesney, thought that he was a man for the job, so that's a start. Having got the star, we needed mum. I approached various actresses, and the first actress I approached was Dorothea, because Reg liked her and I liked her, and we thought she would be ideal, so I went to see her. She lived by Putney Bridge and said, Doris, will you come and be the mum and on the buses? I told her all about it, and she said, yes, I'd love to, Stuart, but my husband's job is a phrenologist and he's in a conference in South America, and I've promised to go with him, and so I'm not available. We couldn't put the show off because television companies had to have the show when they wanted it, not when you could do it, and so she couldn't do it. I tried various actresses, and in the end, I asked Dame Sisley Courtnidge, as she was then, if she would do it, and she did, as you know, the first series. But she didn't gel with the others. She was a big star in her own right, and the thing about On the Buses, it was a team show. Everyone helped everyone else, and we couldn't have people who wanted to do their own thing, and Sisley Courtnidge's idea was to sit around the piano and sing songs. Anyway, then we had to cast the bus conductor and also the inspector, and I had fortunately been asked by London Weekend Television to do a show called Mrs Wilson's Diary that had run successfully in the West End for some time. It was based on a private eye who ran this sort of diary of the week and they made a stage show of it and in the cast there were two actors, Bob Grant and Stephen Lewis. Stephen, funnily enough, played an inspector looking after Harold Wilson in the story of Mrs Wilson's diary. I thought he's a great actor and Bob Grant with his big teeth, he played George Brown. He was a drunken foreign secretary at the time and was quite notorious but anyway, Bob was very amusing playing this character so I suggested that the Ronnies, Wolf and Chesney, have a look at these two and they agreed with me that they were right for those two parts. Michael Robbins, he's no longer with us now. I worked with him at the BBC when I was position at the BBC and I thought he was quite talented and ideally suited. But I was stumped when it came to the part of Olive. And so I said to the Ronnies, I don't know a girl who is sort of plain and fat. Stuart Allen credits Ronald Chesney and Ronald Wolfe for casting Anna Karen for the part of Olive and he offered this memory. Allen said, another amusing story about Anna was that when the show became successful after the second series, when people were watching in their millions, she started to get a little glamorous and she started to slim a bit. And of course, this wasn't good. She was a very sensitive girl and I found that if I upset her enough in rehearsals and said rather nasty things to her, she'd rush off to the canteen, eat a lot of cream buns and come back with a figure that we required. That's the casting for you and we've went through all of them. 
It was the fact that they worked so well together that I think has ensured that the show continues to be successful today.